Hello students, um, in the previous class we summarized um, what happens when you have A as a periodic, mat uh, periodic matrix uh, or uh, A is periodic which is basically the coefficient matrix in your uh, homogeneous equation and we also tried uh, to um, formulate uh, the linearization of a nonlinear system, right? So, uh, what we had is uh, a, an equation of this type. So, instead of having, having a homogeneous system, we basically had uh, this uh, equation um, x dot equals to uh, f of t x and uh, x at uh, x at t 0 is equals to x0. So, this is our uh, initial value problem that is given to us and uh, from here um, we sort of put up the initial condition and we wrote uh, x uh, I mean a, a system in terms of y e that was y dot equals to f of uh, t comma y e and uh, y at t1 is equals to uh, x at t1 plus some z1. And uh, then we take the difference and we formulated a, 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 a problem where z in terms of z and uh, that was nothing but uh, z dot equals to f of uh, t comma y minus f of t comma x and uh, z at uh, t 1 is equals to z 1. So, this is the third system. So, here our z is nothing but our uh, y t minus x t. So, this right y t minus x t this is what we had ok. Now, from here we said that uh, this um, uh, uh, that the asymptotic behavior of the solution of this equation can be directly linked to the asymptotic behavior of uh, this solution right. So, uh, in the neighborhood of the point of course, z equals to z 1 equals to 0. So, um, this uh, we are talking since quite few classes that uh, instead of looking at the original system you formulate into a, a linear system and then uh, basically you check the stability around the stationary point or equilibrium point. So, instead of talking about the stability of the original system 1, we talk about the stability of the system 3 around the point z 1 equals to 0 and uh, from in the neighborhood of the point z 1 equals to 0 and uh, th that is basically uh, how to say uh, confirm the asymptotic stability of 1. Um, we said that f is uh, differentiable with respect to the second argument that means uh, not the t, but uh, x or y whatever uh, argument it, is, it has and then we can do the expansion. So, you know uh, this uh, series expansion or Taylor series expansion for a function. So, that kind of expansion we can do and uh, we can write f of uh, t y, we can write uh, f of t y t is equals to f of t x t. Uh, we can write bar here or uh, even if it, uh, we are not writing that is fine. And then we can write j of uh, t comma x t into uh, z and uh, uh, x t and then this is z t plus uh, uh, z of t z t. So, after this, uh, we are saying that uh, these are all um, I'd say how higher order terms which you are not writing. And uh, J is the Jacobian matrix which is given by J is the Jacobian matrix of uh, F Jacobian Jacobian matrix of F and uh, limit. So, this is let us call this as equation number 3, 4 and this is 5 and uh, sixth one is uh, and uh, we are saying that limit norm of z tends to 0 more norm of g uh, t of z uh, norm divided by norm of z is equals to 0. Let us call it as equation number 6. So, basically the linearization of first this system um, around uh, the solution x is obtained by truncating um, truncating this uh, this after the linear term right. So, we can truncate it after the linear term and substitute uh, substitution of this truncated expansion into uh, 4.3. So, if we substitute this uh, in here, so basically this and this will get cancelled and we are left with only this term and uh, this one we are saying that as norm of z approaches to 0, this will actually goes to uh, 0. So, basically what we will get is we will get uh, z uh, dot is equals to j of uh, t comma x t 
into z right so this homogeneous uh, linear equation is of the form z dot equals to at into z right and uh, from there we can uh, its stability uh, if at is a uh, constant or periodic so we can establish the stability of uh, this equation so if i uh, uh, if if I uh, know this uh, at is constant or if at is periodic, so from there we can say that uh, whether it is uh, uh, stable or not. And based on this stability of this with respect to uh, uh, with respect to this z equation, we can go back and say that the stability of uh, the original equation one. And all these things can be put into a very nice th nice theorem. So let us call this system as uh, seven. This system as uh, seven and uh, I would like to state um, the theorem here, theorem 1 for today. It is called as uh, Poincare, Poincare, uh, Lyapunov, Lyapunov theorem. So, if the system, if the system 4.7 this is uh, sorry uh, not 4.7 just 7 if the system 7 so in my notes it's uh, article number 4 so that's why i'm using 4.7 but here it is only 7 if the system 7 uh, is uniformly is uniformly uh, asymptotically stable asymptotically stable and uh, if the vector field z t comma z and uh, g t comma z in uh, um, 4 in 4 um, satisfies satisfies 6 satisfies 6 uniformly in T uniformly in T and uh, is moreover Lipschitz continuous continuous in the neighborhood of z equals to 0, then the solution x t of 1 is also uniformly asymptotically table right so basically whatever i just summarized so if the system uh, system uh, 7 that is the last system is uniformly asymptotically stable um, and if the vector field g uh, which we have shown that limit norm of z uh, tends to 0 g by, uh, norm of g by capital uh, by norm of uh, z, uh, z is equals to 0 uh, uniformly in t and is also Lipschitz continuous uh, that z basically that is Lipschitz continuous in the neighborhood of uh, z equals to 0. So, then the solution x of our original equation is also uniformly asymptotically stable. The proof of this is uh, relatively long. So, we will just uh, skip the proof and uh, uh, but uh, of course, as you can see it has uh, been telling us that if you have a nonlinear system reduce it, reduce it into a linear one and uh, then it will be just our analogous form that we are dealing with uh, since beginning. And from there, whatever asymptotic stability of your uh, modified equation has, it will maintain the same asymptotic stability for the original system, right. And uh, there is a small corollary that we can uh, state here. So, small corollary or small theorems or uh, that we can do a follow up with uh, corollary. So, a stationary point, a stationary point uh, 
the stationary point um, uh, stationary point of a of an initial value problem is uniformly asymptotically asymptotically stable if all eigen values of jacobian matrix in that point or at that point have negative real parts obviously because uh, this we have already addressed a few classes ago that uh, the stability uh, so you have a nonlinear system from there we can formulate it in terms of a linear system where the coefficients are given by the jacobian and in that jacobian matrix if it has a negative eigenvalues then basically what you will get is uh, the uh, the uh, stability of this uh, modified system and therefore you can say that the original system is stable here in terms of this matrix notation and all those things we are establishing the same results i mean uh, whatever um, uh, calculation I've showed you for a 2 by 2 system few classes ago. Uh, right now, whatever results we have summarized in last two classes, it's just a summary of uh, the previous uh, results, but in a more of a theoretical and compact way. So, we did a lot of theory, but it is telling us the same thing that we did in, uh, in like 3 or 4 classes ago, where we checked the Jacobian, whether it has a, a Jacobian matrix has a real eigenvalues or not or complex eigenvalues, if it has real eigenvalues, then what is um, the, uh, the, the magnitude? I mean, basically, um, whether it is negative or whether the complex eigenvalues has negative real parts or not. Based on which we can say that this modified system has stable solution uh, or uniformly asymptotically, asymptotically stable solution, then you go back and then you say that the original equation has uniformly asymptotically stable solution. This is what is summarized here because if you go back to the nonlinear system this is what we have been doing now uh, we are given a nonlinear system we deduced it into a homogeneous form and this jacobian is actually the jacobian matrix of f so let us look at the eigenvalues of this then we can say that this is uniformly or asymptotically stable or not and then you go back and then you say the uniform and asymptotic stability of this equation one same results but for a higher system that's that's what we have done here Okay, and uh, it is unstable, and of course there is a small extension. So an, another corollary two, we can say that uh, a stationary point, a stationary point of an initial value problem is unstable. Is unstable if and only if uh, as unstable if the jacobian matrix jacobian matrix at that point at that point has at least one positive eigenvalue positive eigenvalue or uh, positive uh, real part If it is not complex, then positive eigenvalues. If it is a complex, then it, if it has at least one of the eigenvalues has at least one positive real part, then it, it fails to become stable. This, all these things we have established uh, already in our um, uh, in, in our previous example. Um, so here also I can give you a very quick example. Let us see uh, before we can actually move on to the uh, next discussion. So consider the system. I guess it was a lot of theory since last two classes. So let us give one example. Um, consider uh, x dot equals to, um, let us take the scalar one only. So no vector sign. x dot equals to minus of x to the power p, where p is an integer and uh, greater than 1, where p is an integer and greater than 1. 
So, from here uh, solution it is Jacobian we can calculate the Jacobian will be just uh, the Jacobian of f the Jacobian of f will be just uh, del f del x and this will be minus of p x to the power p minus 1. So, del f del x or simply d f d x you can say uh, since it is one variable. So, let us write as d f d x right and uh, um, thus around stationary point. So, stationary point is around a stationary point uh, at st or not around at stationary point x equals to 0 Jacobian is uh, also 0 ok. And uh, the solution of the ODE uh, with x at t 0 equals to x 0 is uh, we can write down the solution directly. So, it is x t equals to x 0 1 minus 1 minus p uh, x 0 to the power p minus 1 t minus t 0 whole to the power 1 minus p right. So, when so, if sometimes what happens is what uh, here we are observing. So, this Jacobian around the uh, stationary point it became 0 at the stationary point it became 0. So, if some eigenvalues of uh, this uh, of this Jacobian at 0 uh, have vanishing real parts and the other uh, or and the other ne other negative real parts then linearization does not lead to a dec decisive uh, um, conclusion. So, if uh, it has a positive real part then we say that it is unstable if it has a negative real part then we say that it is uh, stable. So, unstable for positive stable for negative real parts for the eigenvalues, but sometimes if the eigenvalues become 0 then uh, we may not be able to uh, around let us say. So, for example, in this case at z equals to 0 it is 0. So, it uh, we cannot lead to a decisive conclusion. So, then we are left with um, to check manually. So, here uh, in this case we calculated the solution taking the initial condition as x at t 0 equals to x 0 and then we wrote down the solution explicitly. Now, if our there, there will be several cases. So, if p is odd thus uh, our p will be at least get row equal to 3. So, then we find that we find that as uh, t tends to infinity if p is get row equal to 3 then this is ne negative and then it will come in the denominator. So, as t tends to infinity x t will tend to 0. So, at least it is giving us uh, and for all of course, uh, for all x 0 not equals to 0 definitely. So, in, uh, for all x 0 not equals to 0. So, in this case the origin is uniformly asymptotically stable in this case in this case origin i e x equals to 0 is uniformly asymptotically stable ok. Now, if it is um, if p is even if p is even we find that we find that for x 0 less than 0 the solution has finite interval of existence that means after a while it will blow up. So, as t tends to infinity the solution might tend to infinity finite interval of existence of existence since or because since x t will tends to will tend to infinity uh, if t tends to t 0 plus 1 by 1 minus p x 0 to the power 1 minus p. So, if t tends to this then in that case uh, our uh, x t will tend to infinity obviously because then it will be 1 by 0. So, here uh, the origin is unstable for even p. So, if p is even. So, this shows that this shows that origin 
is unstable unstable for even p's or for uh, unstable for p even so as you can see um, when the eigen values are actually uh, having positive real parts uh, then the it is uh, easy to say whether the uh, solution is stable um, i sorry whether the solution is unstable and if it is less than 0 then the solution is stable but when the jacobian uh, when the when some eigen values of j at 0 have vanishing real parts and others uh, negative real parts then uh, we cannot lead to a decisive conclusion and uh, this particular example is a testimony to that that uh, then we have to check it manually right all right now uh, we'll move on and uh, we'll still deal with the nonlinear systems, but sometimes uh, when we have the nonlinear system, we take help of uh, something called a Lyapunov function, and uh, this Lyapunov function actually helps us uh, to deal with uh, this uh, stability issues, right? So I will start with uh, that. So let us. Uh, start with. Lyapunov function. So, how do we uh, introduce or define this Lyapunov function? So, Lyapunov function. So, before that, I will give a small motivation. So, we introduce some definition. So, if x is a solution, let uh, x is a solution, uh, be a solution, not is, be a solution. of the system x dot is equals to f of x. Sometimes it is also called as autonomous system. If there is no t, then it is autonomous. If t, then it is uh, non-autonomous. And uh, Vx, this is equation number 1. And uh, say Vx a scalar differentiable different simple function defined on phase space then the total derivative of vx is defined by we write a little bit different uh, notation d of v of x which is d d t of v x which is equals to d v d x dot x dot and this is d v d x into f of x. So, this uh, d of uh, f v of x basically um, the scalar derivative the derivative of the scalar function v. Um, so, sorry v is scalar. So, why I do not know why I put. Uh, so, there should not be a vector notation. So, v is scalar excuse me. So, v is scalar and uh, differentiable function defined on the phase space then the total derivative of v is basically d d t of v which is equals to d d d t uh, sorry d d uh, x of uh, v dot uh, x dot and that is basically um, our um, uh, d v by d x. So, this also be a scalar part and uh, we have d v by d x f dot x. So, this is our vector. So, here d v by d x. So, with uh, d v by dx is the gradient of v and uh, dot denotes basically the dot product or the inner product and equation 5.2 uh, immediately gives us the time derivative of v along the solution um, where the solution is given by the projection of the gradient of v on the vector field along a solution of uh, equation 1 
is given by the projection of the uh, gradient of v along uh, f of x. So, basically um, we say that uh, the definition basically uh, a function v x is positive semi definite around the origin if a neighborhood d of the origin exists such that if a neighborhood d, if a neighborhood d of the origin exists such that um, v x is differentiable on d on d second one is v at 0 equals to 0 and third criteria is v at x is positive then this is positive definite um, or v x is get right equal to 0 then this is a positive semi definite definite positive semi definite for all comma x not equals to 0. The positive semi definite and uh, positive definite is similar. I mean, we can similarly define uh, negative definite and negative semi definite. So, a function v is uh, positive definite around the origin if there is a neighborhood d uh, of the origin exists such that within that neighborhood f is differentiable on d and uh, v at 0 equals to 0 and v x is positive. Uh, then it is positive definite. If it is greater or equal to 0, then it is positive semi definite. If it is less than 0, then it is negative definite. And if it is less or equal to 0, then it is negative semi definite. And um, next definition is Vx is called a Lyapunov, uh, called a Lyapunov function for a vector field f which has the origin as stationary point if a bounded neighborhood d of the origin exists such that v x is positive definite on d and second one is d f v of x that means this derivative of v is negative semi definite on d right so it is called as lapunov function this v if v is positive definite on d and d of v of x is negative semi definite on d and uh, it is called as a strong lapunov function uh, if uh, 1 and 2 if this uh, so third definition is uh, uh, third definition is v x is called strong Lyapunov function called a strong Lyapunov function um, if in the previous definition previous definition uh, in, the, in the previous definition 2 
is replaced by df v of x is negative definite negative definite on d right so these are the few definitions and uh, uh, there is a small result that i would like to mention before we close of this lecture so theorem 3 for today the origin is a Lyapunov stable stationary point of what was the IVP number of one of one of one if a Lyapunov function for f exist. Um, the origin is a Lyapunov stable uh, stationary point of 1 if a Lyapunov function uh, for f exists. Uh, the proof is again a uh, bit longer, so we will skip the proof and uh, um, in the next class we will see one example that how we can connect the Lyapunov function with the stability of the equation. All right. So, I will stop here in this class and uh, we will continue our discussion uh, from Lyapunov function in the next class. Thank you for your attention.